Good morning and welcome to June 29th, the day where no one can golf. It's always a pleasant surprise when you wake up and you look at your PGA lineups and up and down the list is a ton of pluses. That's always fun. Um, but I come to expect it though. There's no stat or anything that you're going to be able to contrive that possibly makes up for human performance. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. That's not try. It's, it's literally like we're lucky if guys are four holes in, but when you have some of the bigger names like Ricky Fowler, Brandon Steele at plus two, four holes into the tournament, it's just a big, you know, confusing mess of what's going on. You start to see the guys above them on the leaderboard, and you're like, okay, that makes sense. I knew it was going to be a Vaughn Taylor week. That's clearly what was going to happen. I have ownership of him, which I probably shouldn't admit because he's probably going to finish plus 10. But anyway, always fun to see that. Really gives you the motivation to go on for the day when you've pretty much lost all hope that anybody who tests out so well in the... uh, And that's the thing with, I can't really go on too much of a tangent here, but that's the thing with stats and playing new, new courses and stuff like that. It's just an absolute crapshoot. You know, you can't try to force what a guy should be doing or what should yield a strong performance. Anyway, I'm going to have to just do a DFS only podcast. It's not focused on any sports just so that I can rant and rave consistently about how I wish that professional sports players were held to the same standard Uh, as all of us where, you know, if we don't do our job well, we don't have a job. Anyway, let's talk hitting options and, uh, really, there's not a lot of junk pitchers that really stick out to me tonight. There's a few guys, uh, we'll talk about here and I think they're all in good positions. Let's start things off with Jock Peterson, 8,400 fantasy draft, 3,800 FanDuel, 4,400 DraftKings. Peterson is anything but a trustworthy option. Definitely not a guy that you want to roll out in your cash games. But let's face it, this is baseball. And, you know, we see all the time, especially with the Red Sox, because they're an awful cesspool of a baseball team, that in a great position against a guy who's giving up six runs a game, offenses will just hit a brick wall. They just can't figure out how to put it together. I think especially with that team, their mentality becomes, we're the Red Sox, we're good because Big Poppy played for us and now we don't know what to do because he's not here anymore. And they start to get in their heads that they're going to have a successful game. But the reality of the situation is that you can't, this guy's a major league pitcher that you're facing regardless of what his name might be. Anyway, I'm saying that to say this. Maybe Jock Peterson, not the worst cash game play. I know we want to play quote-unquote safety. There is no safety in baseball. I guarantee you, you can try to play that route, and you're going to get screwed over 9 out of 10 times. Jock Peterson takes on J.C. Ramirez. Started off super sweet. Like, this guy was great to just throw in your tournament lineups, SP2 on DraftKings. And then the regression set in. And now he's allowing a 399 wall, but 39.2% fly ball rate, 45.1% hard contact. Peterson stroking a little bit better, a much, you know, uh, higher end tournament option because he's going to have those games where he doubles or triple dongs. Like the outlook for him tonight, fair price. Moving on from there, let's go with Jose Bautista. What do the stats say? The stats say, if you don't know Ubaldo Jimenez is a horrible pitcher and I don't need to spit out stats to you, then you shouldn't be playing MLB DFS. He is awful, and he has been awful for years. Um, I don't mind stacking a whole team. I really don't do that too often just because you get burnt really quickly if it doesn't go uh, how you think it should. But this is a situation where, you know, I will do it. He's bad against both sides of the plate. Bautista leading off. And you're getting it 8K on Fantasy Draft, 3,900 FanDuel, 4,100 DraftKings. Those aren't bad prices. He went deep yesterday. I think he's got the same prospects today. At the very least, I expect him to get on base, and I think he could get around and score some runs. Next up, let's look at Joey Votto. 
as our favorite play of the night. 9,300 Fantasy Draft, 4,100 FanDuel, 4,700 DraftKings. And this is another play where we could dig deep for stats, which I don't really have time to do right now. I kind of have a little issue with my spreadsheet going on. Um, but we know Jimmy Nelson can be a good pitcher. And then we know Jimmy Nelson can kind of fall apart. And we know Votto is one of the best hitters in the game. This is in his home park, a hitter's park. Um, this is just kind of those one plus one equal two situations. Like, you don't, I don't, it's the same with Ubaldo Jimenez. Like, if you looked at it objectively and took the name away, doesn't have a super high fly ball rate. You know, doesn't have a super, super high hard contact rate. But if you attach Ubaldo Jimenez to that, all of a sudden, now it becomes, well, that 36% now feels like 90% in my heart because I know how bad Ubaldo Jimenez is. And I know how bad Jimmy Nelson can be when he when he falls apart. On the road, in a poor, hitting envi- or poor pitching environment, to me that just says start Votto and move on, especially in your cash games. So to wrap things up tonight, Jock Peterson, Jose Bautista, Joey Votto, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Check us out at researchfantasy.com. Like us on Facebook at Research and Win. Follow us on Twitter at Research and Win. And join us again tomorrow.